Hey, Bill. Hey. We are back again, and um, we've got some fun topics to discuss. We're going to talk about grave sucking today, <laughs> a, um, a term that I don't think we coined. Uh, one of our critics or a concerned citizen uh, coined it, but uh, it stuck, and it was quite amusing when we first heard it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but I, to give a larger context for this, like I've been wanting to write about this for a while, and like, and people are like, why don't you just address this? And it's you know that whole deal. And we have done a few things about this, but right. for me, there's a, 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 an interesting story of like our culture in it and our history and how we don't, how we address things and when we address things and why we'll address things that are that are all in there, um, in this topic. So. The, uh, I, our backgrounds are different. Like you were raised charismatic mm -hmm. and yeah. long family history of unusual uh, supernatural experiences and the power of God hitting you guys yep. In, yep. in various ways. I, I was raised non-charismatic, was um, a little bit, you know, kind of interested, wanted everything that's in scripture. But I remember I didn't speak in tongues until years later, until I was in my late 20s. And, mm -hmm. and I, I told the Lord many times, like, I'm ready. Ready, set, go. Uh, anytime. Ready now. And uh, But I, you know, as I look back, I was so worried about doing it wrong. And I thought I had to have this pristine holiness or this, it had to be this pristine, perfectly spiritual moment. And um, and it just kept me from risking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a lot of what our journey has been on is like learning to risk to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Have you found that risk is a part yeah, of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to just... You know, we, we want to be right. You never want to be I in error. I love being right. Yeah. I, but, I mean, in, in, we, know, we don't want to be in error. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be deceived. I mean, those are always concerns. But but we're, we're it's almost like I'm required. It's almost like I have to be willing to fail to succeed. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a, it's a huge part of our culture is that we don't always get it right. So then we clean up the mess. But it's, yeah. it's like it, Chris does this well. He, he presents uh, the two sides of a company, Apple Computers, for mm -hmm. example, research and development yep. and manufacturing. Well, your values in those two worlds are completely different. Manufacturing, you want zero defects. Yep. Every product works perfectly. It looks just like the other. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. we don't want to recall. We yeah. don't have to, you yeah. know. But on research and development, if zero defect is your primary value, you won't invent anything. You won't mm -hmm. create anything. And so, in character, we want to we want to carry that zero defect value. We want to say, you know what? There's no excuse for sin. Let's hold each other accountable. Right. Let's right. let's live in purity for Christ. But when it comes to ministry, when it comes especially to areas that are in the Bible that we don't know anyone who's who's really living in fully, mm -hmm. we experiment. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of people nervous, but that yeah. is that is the nature of it. And sometimes we succeed, and when we do, it's usually big. And when we fail, it's usually mm -hmm. Big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so th there's a there's a mess to clean up, but that's we have almost like uh, the unspoken agreement in our in our family in our leadership team is uh, research and development means we're going to yeah. we're going to create room to to see if we can learn together, stay accountable, uh, but let's see if we can learn this thing together and and touch into some things that are in the word that are not the normal part of church life. Yeah, and so that's one of the ways that we. And it's not just the leaders. We want our people to be have yeah, a yeah, yeah. great character in like the, in the manufacturing, but yeah. also to walk with the Lord and to just experience what the Lord has for them yeah. uh, in, in a variety. Knowing that Scripture, I think you talk about it, Scripture doesn't limit all the experiences we have, but it it sets a trajectory for the sorts of experiences that we yeah, can have. Yeah, exactly. There are lists in the Bible. The lists don't contain God. They reveal God. Mm -hmm. They don't restrict what he can do. They reveal the nature of what he does. Yeah, it's it's a huge part of my own family history, so that's that's important for me. Absolutely. So from the top, I, I just say, hey, listen, I've been here since 1991, been under your leadership since '94, so '95, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, we <coughs> never taught uh, this experience that I see described on the web as grave sucking. <laughs> never taught it, never done it. I teach regularly in the school ministry and then the dean of school ministry. This is not something we teach or preach. No, and so no, it's. No. It's a it is a bit alarming to sit in Reading and see the world think you think something, and you know you don't. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I don't know if that's happened to any of our listeners, but it is odd. It like, is, how could is. you believe that about us without checking in with us or knowing? Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, and the, and then you've taught us early on. I think we're changing. We've had to change this, but you you generally wouldn't respond to critics yeah. and come into a stance of opposition. And we all tried to model that early on. I think we still are trying to do that, but <laughs> but we would just feel like, oh no, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna be drawn into defensive battles. 
you want to talk about that? Yeah, I, my approach, you know, is is pretty much the same. Yeah. I mean, well, we got it from you, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I I just figure if God doesn't defend me, I'm not worth defending. Mm-hmm. You know, let him let him run my defense. But there there was a time several years back um, where there were some attacks in a newspaper. And I gave a one Sunday response. Yeah. And it was because of how, how young believers can be affected. Yeah. That, that was no, a concern. True. So I, I think it's appropriate to give a defense, yeah. uh, but not to attack or retaliate or any of that kind of well, stuff. And to give understanding, because lots of folks aren't attacking. They're just wondering at some point. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like helpful to be able to say to them, exactly. like, hey, listen, this is not a practice exactly. that we do. But yeah. it, it does uh, – it does, I don't know, gently, it's not holy, but it irks me. Like, how would you think this and perpetuate this myth when it's something I'm in the environment, regularly teaching and living with these people, and this is not a practice that we are participating in and yeah. that we, we teach or, and certainly not with the, in the, the connections that people have made. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, every once in a while, I'd just be like, I'm not going to talk about that thing because it's so dumb. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's almost like the question, have you stopped beating your wife? Like, if I actually say yes or no, I, by implication, I'm guilty just from your question. So I'm not going to address your question. But uh, over time, that, that yeah. probably used to work before the internet. And and now every once in a while, somebody Good discovers point. an old video or an old something rather like, hey, do you guys? Like, no, yeah. no, yeah. we don't. So hopefully yeah. this, exactly. this time of uh, talking will help put that to rest a little bit. It, it may it may in part come out of the fact that I have really felt strong from the Lord that we are to honor those who have gone before us, mm-hmm. and it's a huge part of our culture. You know, the we're we're uh, going to be building this revival uh, uh, museum library, library mm-hmm. house of generals, where we give honor to people who have gone before us, and some of them ended poorly, and uh, but we're 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 going to try to honor them anyway. I mean, the way the scripture honors Solomon, he ended pretty pretty poorly. Hezekiah, same. Yeah. So that's the mandate. And so I, I've gone to graves. I've prayed, but I don't. We don't talk to the dead. We don't yeah. try to get something from the dead. I mean, that's. Yeah. But I will. I'll, I'll kneel. I'll humble myself before the Lord. I pray, uh, Charles Finney, God, we, we need that kind of an awakening in our nation again. And, and I will go there. And, and I'm sure that. Uh, I, I suppose some of uh, the rumor comes out of that that the, that we will humble ourselves mm-hmm. and and pray. I've been. I, I remember in Wales. I went to the the very not only Evan Roberts' grave, but I went to the church where the power of God hit him so powerfully. Mm-hmm. And I just I literally sat where he sat for I think maybe two hours. I just sat and just prayed. Yeah. I'm not talking to the dead. Yeah. I'm not. I, I'm not interested in conversation with angels. I, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit, why would you want to talk to anyone else? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and so I'm. I'm just asking God, do it again. Just do it again. So it's a it's a huge topic, and it would go all over. But you've just mentioned so there are places of significance that are like a touchstone for our faith. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not just our faith, but even other things we care about. Like I've been at the Lincoln Memorial, and you're like, my goodness, the exactly. sacrifice of. Those men, the loss of lives, the articulation of the yeah. vision that he had, and I feel like, wow, uh, yeah. you, I get to be in touch with my Americanism <laughs> at some yeah. level, my patriotism, yeah. and so these places, like we've, we've joked, the upper room, like in Israel, I don't know if you know this, uh, <laughs> it's not the real upper room, by the way, that thing's <laughs> way under the dirt at some point, but but you've been there, I yeah. haven't, yeah. and you would say it's a touchstone, it is, and that that you've experienced the Lord's presence in that. Oh yeah, yeah, we've had mighty things happen yeah. in that environment. And it may just be because people have been going there for so many years praying that, yeah. you know, there's just this thing that happens there. It doesn't matter to me how or what it is. It's just they they stir up all kinds of memories, emotions, scripture. You you see what happened in the original upper room and how significant that was. That uh, it's just a place to really, well, it's a contact point for faith, yeah. the way you put it. I think, I think it's beautiful. Well, yeah. and to be super clear, sometimes a quote of yours is attributed to this idea that, we're actually going to graves looking for anointings to be, you know, to, to get and to pass on. Um, there are anointings, mantles, revelations, and mysteries that have lain unclaimed, <laughs> literally where they were left because the generation that walked in them never passed them on. I believe it's impossible for us to recover realms of anointing, realms of insight. Sorry, I believe it's possible for us to recover <laughs> realms of anointing, uh, realms of insight, realms of God that have been uh, untended for decades simply by choosing to reclaim them and perpetuate them for future generations. So at that point, you're talking about in honor and faith. It, what I felt the Lord sp- speak to my heart like 20 years ago when I first started collecting for our, our library museum mm-hmm. was that if we honored the saints of the past, not worship, 
not talked to for sure. Um, but if we honored them, the Lord would give us access to their the grace that they lived in. You know, there's so many things that previous generations accomplished that are, you know, the anointing on a Spurgeon, his yeah. his yeah. ability, uh, Wesley, to preach to Whitfield. Mm -hmm. They're anointings we need again. Absolutely. And uh, and 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 so I, I feel like we have a role to value and respect the person who said yes to God, the Spirit of God that marked them to bring such change. And so that's what I try to do is I try to honor that element, the Spirit of God, the person who said yes. And it's not it's not worship. It's just it's the right thing to do. And so that's what we do. And so that's why I feel, you know, way back. I think it's twenty years ago now, uh, where mm -hmm. the Lord I've really impressed on my heart. We need to do this library museum, and and in some way, just in life, to honor these people that have gone before us, because God will release into the earth. Not all about Bethel. Certainly not all no. about me, yeah. but release into the earth again what He's done in past, in past generations. And that's what I'm hungry for. Yeah. It's probably two things. You know, the scripture's full of that. Scripture's full of honoring the, the encounters these past saints have had with the Lord, yes. which are supposed to inspire yes. us <laughs> yeah. to have like encounters and like impact in the earth. And so uh, I think one thing around that same time was I, I had been through seven years of higher learning with, um, you know, in, in Christian community and had not heard hardly anything about the healing revivalists. So mm -hmm. I was a bit like, where where were these stories yeah. In all the church history that was covered, yeah. where were these um, these stories of, of, of uh, revival that had signs and wonders and manifestations anointing them? Like these folks were lost from history. Uh, Mariah Woodworth Eder, yeah. I hadn't heard anything about John G. Lake. I hadn't heard anything about. So I'm I'm in seven years mm -hmm. of evangelical, whom I love. I'm an evangelical. <laughs> kisses. The uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> the uh, but but to have like wow, we've been kind of embarrassed or or just didn't care or choose to remember the radical sacrifice yeah. and impact and power these folks moved in. And for me, that was eye-opening. So when I heard you say that statement, yeah. I'm like, hey, hey there's, a, there's a forgotten move of, of the Holy Spirit and power that yes, yes. the church has shied away from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we have a responsibility. It's a responsibility of honor, but mm -hmm. it's also a responsibility to preserve the testimony because that's the spoken and or written record of what God has done, yeah. which prophesies his intent into this generation. And if we don't steward the testimony well, the record of his nature, mm -hmm. the displays of his covenant with people, if we don't steward that well, we're not really prepared for what he wants to do again. Yeah. And so it, they're all intertwined. It's our responsibility to serve this generation well. You know. Yeah, so yeah. when we hear those stories, it's actually, this is what's possible in the Lord. Yes. And that's kind of what we're after. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, as far as a touchstone, I was at NIAC and I, um, college in New York, and I happened to see A.B. Simpson's grave is there, so as we're touring the campus, it was there. And it was it was meaningful to just be, uh, again, not to, you know, have some weird, like, I'm, there's a special anointing here, but again, to go, this man was mightily uh, used by the Lord. Absolutely. And uh, was, uh, you know, he was empowering women in ministry way before that time. He was... He had uh, racial unity was going on in his ministry. He was ministering to the poor of New York, doing a yeah, radically yeah, beautiful yeah. work. And being in his grave, and, and also it was connected to also some of the martyrs uh, that, that that denomination, the CMA, has experienced as well, and feeling like, well, there's a weight and a gravitas to, wow. Wow. to these experiences again. And, and we it's a disservice when we act like these aren't important or aren't real. But again, so for clear, we're not going to graves sucking the anointing <laughs> out of them, but we no, are not afraid no. of like uh, of honoring and revering what God's done through the saints in the past. No, that's right. That's right. So being a non-charismatic uh, and it kind of coming, and then there's all this risk happening, and I, I affectionately, uh, at least I think I coined the phrase spooky church because so many things happen that were just spooky to me. And I'd, I'd like go home and go, oh, Lord, what are we doing? I want to talk about all those right now because we can talk about those in other podcasts. But I was on a 10 or 12-year, you know, still am. Like when I see something unusual happen, Lord, I'm like, I try to like, instead of just judging it, immediately go, Holy Spirit, is that you? How much of it is you? Yeah. What do I make of it? Yeah. And knowing the response of my heart to that in the moment, it actually says a lot about how I'm growing in the Lord, yeah. you know, in that moment. So this idea, though, um, uh, whenever I was going to write about grave sucking, just like, we don't do this, leave us alone, stop saying this. I, there is a, a story from a school of ministry, though, that 
I do think it's instructive. So I'll, I'll unpack that. And, and I never know, like, if I'm, am I sharing too much and I'm going to freak people out here more. But in our culture where we're actually experiencing the presence of the Lord and inviting people to, to experience the Lord's presence, unusual things happen. Things that actually are called God that aren't, but it takes a while to figure that out. Sometimes <laughs> uh, I would say that, you know, the Lord hits somebody and maybe, again, I'm making up this percentage, but it's 10% God and 90% the person, but that's 10% more of God than they ever had before. So, you know, you're on this journey, yeah. you know, of like, I've just got to, I've, I've got to, with the community, with our feedback with each other, uh, you know, kind of walk these journeys of risk. So in the school of ministry, we had, one of our leaders had a profound encounter with the Lord. Uh, at the grave of a former church leader. So wow. he comes back and gives a testimony about this. And because our students are so hungry, <laughs> I mean, it's like meat to a wolf at some level. Like, you're kidding? The Lord will meet you at a grave? So it, it, I remember in that as the yeah. dean watching it, like, whoa, what, what? But but I've had to learn over time, like, if I try to kill something too early, that's, that's we, good. we totally yeah. miss the potentially the good <clears throat> things. And again, the weird things that come. But when I kill everything too early, our people, our students, stop stop taking risks. So that's, that's the huge. number one thing. I, that's huge. You, so when you, if you're like that, will embarrass us. That that's that's kind of dangerous. That could go wrong. Well, look, we won't do anything. Uh, we have that about money. Like money's dangerous. Don't stay near it. You know, don't do anything with money. You know, uh, leadership's dangerous. You know, you can do it wrong. Don't be a leader. I mean, like yeah, people. If you just are qu quickly, constantly trying to keep us safe from all mistakes, yeah, you will miss out on amazing things the Lord has. So, and and one of the things you end up doing is you end up killing the actual work that God is doing. Absolutely. I mean, that's what Jesus, his warning with the wheat and the tares. He said, don't try to pull the tares out because you will pull out the wheat. Yeah. In other words, it's unfortunate there's tares there, yeah. <laughs> but there's also wheat there. Yeah. And so let them grow into maturity and you'll be able to tell the difference. And that's, that's part of uh, the warning that the Lord gives us is that, you know, if we try to keep everything squeaky clean always, because I do like perfection, I do like things organized mm -hmm. and accurate, but if I'm obsessive about that, I'll actually hinder and and affect negatively the work that God was doing, that 10% you make reference yeah, to. Yeah, I think it's like, I love being right. I think you do too. But it's like the weirdest thing in the Lord. Like you can't, you have to lay down that yeah. love of being right yeah, to exactly. like let people experience this, who God is and what he's up to. I mean, when you think about the early church moving from the Old Testament, it's like circumcision is the heart. It is the sign of the covenant people. And you know what? eight to 10 years, maybe 15 years afterwards, they're like, you know, <laughs> to be a Jesus follower, you don't have to do that thing that's in the Old Testament. So it's this yeah. incredible thing where they are risking into this foundational teaching of the Old Testament. It, it is morphed into baptism. There's a new sign of the covenant people that isn't exclusive to men, but it goes is for women as well. So yeah. I, there is this thing in the Lord where he is beckoning us further into his that's presence right. and into his leadership and his articulation. So I've had to like not panic <laughs> yeah. about what people will think yeah. or endure what people will think and just go, the Lord's in this. We got we don't know how, what the end result is, what it'll look like, but the Lord's in this. I mean, and I'm sure when the disciples heard Jesus say, don't worry, she's only sleeping. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's it's not. It's like, what if the, oh my goodness. So uh, anyway, we, we're on this journey. So the students hear this testimony and I, this is, well, I talk, I talk about, this is a good problem. Every pastor in America would want this problem, that we give a testimony of God's encounter and our people reflexively go, I want that. I mean, I want more of that. <laughs> like, you can, the Lord's over there, I'm coming. And so, this is a beautiful, like, like the grace sucking is an unfortunate result of a beautiful hunger yeah, for the true. presence of God. And again, yeah. when the critic labels it, I'm like, this is actually a problem you'd want. You'd want your people so zealous for the Lord's presence that you have to be cautious about what you say because they will move to it. So I think we got guys like Ben Fitzgerald, who's you know a worldwide evangelist, yeah. one of our guys, love him to pieces. He's got a, a video online about like, he's just hungry. He's yeah. hungry and he's like, I'll, whatever it takes, I'll cross oceans, I'll do whatever to experience the presence of the Lord. And so that thing is the heart that we're building. Yeah. Now, so this, this idea of grave suck, sucking as a practice was so, it, it's just like a, almost uh, a weird demonic assault against this beautiful hungry heart yeah. that it became, I was even just resentful of, I'm not even gonna talk about that. Yeah, I'm not gonna I, talk about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it, it's nothing could misrepresent yes. what we live and practice in community, accountable, yep. you know, nothing could, could yep. e even if it would have been mentioned by one of our 
team members, it would have been in jest. It would have been, you know, in well, no, a, the, almost... It actually, uh, I know where you're going with this, but he had this one team member had real experiences, had a real incredible experience that kind of helped light a fire. Yeah, yeah. But again, once it got, once it kind of got traction, I, yeah, the, the term grave sucking, because I'm a bit snarky, I was actually thought it was delightful. Early on, I went, oh gosh, if you're going to purposely misunderstand that much, and then I'm like, well done, sir. But the, <laughs> but over time, you're like, okay, it, in the age of the internet, and yeah, yeah. and as our footprint got bigger, you know, when we're smaller, it's not as painful, you know, like, but exactly. but as our footprint gets bigger, and then people are like, hey, and then they perpetuate lies, um, you're like, oh, that, that, that does hurt. That's, yeah, yeah, that's tough. It does. So there's a picture of your wife, Benny, being uh, laying down on a grave. And yeah, that is actually yeah, yeah. like, so when we say we don't practice this, you're like, ah, oh, we have photographic evidence <laughs> of Benny laying on the grave. What, what, what is she doing? What's her story in that? What's what's up to? What's you know, there? our whole deal is we, we want to respond to God in a way that he wants us to respond. Mm -hmm. If I kneel, if I dance, I've shouted, I've danced before the Lord, I'll lay prostrate before the Lord, and it's that's all it is, is it's, we want to be uh, responsive enough to his impressions that we'll do whatever he says to do and risk looking like a fool in the process, risk being misunderstood in the process. It doesn't, uh, you know, there's no, you don't, you don't get bonus points for being ridiculed, but it, it's, it's just. Oh, no, if you're afraid of ridicule, you'll never do anything great for God. I yeah. mean, you just, any, any, any great leader in any field has yeah. had you know, opponents, critics, and ridicule and mocking. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 when the Holy Spirit hit and in joy that uh, was praises in known languages, people went, they're drunk. Yeah. I mean, in, in the instant, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there are people who go, oh, that, yeah, that, they're drunk. Yeah. So you, you won't do anything in God if you are perpetually trying to please everybody, which is another part. Like I'm always saying to the, <laughs> our team, like the internet's always mad about something. I mean, like I'm not going to. I'm not going to let them uh, control our agenda by what they're exactly, mad about because exactly. there's a part of the internet that's just a machine of rage and frustration. And like, yeah. it'll never be satisfied. Yeah. So that, I don't think either one of us wants to speak to that that thing because no, no. it's unsatiable. <clears throat> but there no. are fellow saints who are like, I just need to know yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you guys We're, are safe and yeah. not... Not super weird. Spooky, but not super weird, yeah. <laughs> We're willing to do whatever we feel like he said to do. I mean, you know, honestly. So uh, that moment, Benny's responding to the leadership, yeah. the, 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 the promptings of the Holy Spirit in that moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks strange. Yeah. You know, I, I get it. Yeah. I've, I've been in those places, too, where my response was not something I'd want filmed, but it's, yeah. you know, it's it's uh, some of the great evangelists have described their prayer time behind closed doors and said, well, you know, we wouldn't want that filmed. It's their cry to God. You know, it, it would look strange to the to the outsider looking in, uh, the tears, the weeping, the mm -hmm. whatever it may be before the Lord. Um, you know, there are just, they're just times where we respond intimately to Him. And, uh, and it's not always... It's not always squeaky clean. It's just honest. Mm -hmm. And so we, we create room in how we do life that, you know, I might not get it right. I, I may next week go, ah, I shouldn't have done that. No, but that's, right. that is how we do life. No, it's, I remember around this time people were like, well, there's the passage in Ezekiel where uh, the dead guy was thrown in and they touched. It's not in Ezekiel. Sorry, it's about the prophet. Yeah, it's, uh, in, it's in the prophet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, where the bones touched the dead bones of the prophet. And then uh, and so even someone in our team was like wondering, like, hey, is there something to be like, hey, ooh, no, no, no. Like what? Uh, we're not going there. Are we saying an anointing is seeking through, uh, you know, a concrete vault and up through, like, like, and that the dirt, like, no. But I do remember as we were wondering aloud, and we, Beth, exactly. will do this. We will wonder aloud, and then we will kind of yeah. go like, whoa, what you're not saying is this. Like, oh, no, I'm not saying that. So, yeah, yeah. so we, we um, I know as, even in that season, there was some articulation that we had to kind of go, hey, that that's not what's happening. Whatever you think is happening with a God encounter. Yeah. It ain't that. Yeah. And then we talk through, you know, the implications of that. Yeah, and, yeah. and and so there's a kind of a self-correcting that we'll do, but we will noodle, uh, you know, and, and wonder and experience a while as we're pressing forward. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So that's that's kind of how we think about it. And people have to realize, what is, they, they write us, what does Bethel think about? I'm like, well, there's Bill and the whole apostolic team. So even on our team, we think some different things sometimes. Absolutely. Like, we talk to each other. We probably have some different ideas about the end times, about various things, about the, the mechanism, how things work. But that's part of our beauty is we don't have giant groupthink in some ways. We will we will 
listen to the, the other uh, yeah. people who are encountering the Lord in this. Uh, there's other folks that have a different maybe perspective on this. We know that um, uh, you know the, the Catholics have a uh, have relics and have something in their theology for relics and and the, the bones of the saints. That wouldn't be something that would. You know, we are participating in or interested in. But again, we're not trying to kill them over that. That would be like, ah, we pr- prefer you don't. We don't We don't know that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot in that for us. <laughs> yeah. But we don't need to separate from you. No, that's right. You know, because of this. And so there, there, are, um, there are other groups that might have a different perspective. But this would be where we land on this. And hopefully it sets the record straight and it becomes the dominant. Hopefully the truth of what we actually do becomes... Uh, yeah. The dominant uh, articulation that's out there. <laughs> One can wish. One can wish for the power of God, Bill. <laughs> so, hey, Bill, let's uh, speak about manifestations. And just to define that word, it's like the making plane of the Holy Spirit or the making plane of something in general when something is shown. So we would say the Holy Spirit hits somebody. We can see the Holy Spirit's on it by the manifestations, by the behaviors that come. Would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's... There's a response when you're touched by power or by peace or by sadness or by whatever. There are physical responses. Yeah, and, and yeah. A, yeah, and so we got physical responses and also behavior and action. You're touched by love. Yeah, you bring grocery to your neighbors. You are exactly. so. There's a responsiveness to the presence of God yeah. across the board that we would be yeah. um, be looking into. So sometimes folks uh, they're wondering what. So what are manifestations? We would say they're they're a sign that the Lord's on somebody or at work. And how do you know it's the person, the Holy Spirit? Or the demonic. I've seen I've seen people shake, for example, under the power of God. Sh- actually, shake. I've seen them shake uh, because of a demon. Mm-hmm. I've seen them shake because they needed attention, yeah. and they all look the same. Yeah, they absolutely. all look the same. It's the fruit. Yeah. If you grade everything by the manifestation, then you will accept some things that are not necessarily right. For example, somebody who's pondering: Are they? Are they deeply considering and praying, or are they uh, resisting what the Holy Spirit is doing? Yeah, it's a manifestation, but it's acceptable. It's an acceptable one. So, when you have someone who is resisting the Holy Spirit and they're in a quiet posture, I, I can't accept quiet posture because it's good in this case and it's not good here. Mm-hmm. It's the same with tears. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same with uh, joy. It's the same with all these things. It's uh, uh, the the. I, I can't just have a list and say, well, this is God and this isn't God because every one of them can be counterfeited. Uh, it's the, That's it's the important part. Yeah, everyone it's the can snake, be counterfeited. Yeah, it's yeah. the snake thing you, you, yeah. you mentioned. You know, So it's like Mo- people can go, you can't do that because it, it looks like something else. And you're like, oh, uh, well, you know, Moses created a snake and then so did Pharaoh. So like you shouldn't have made the snake because Pharaoh can make the snake. Uh, you know, uh, other religions fast, so we shouldn't fast. Other religions pray, so we shouldn't pray. Other religions sing praises, so we shouldn't sing praises. Other way, nations, you know, practice uh, religions practice virtue, so we shouldn't. Pra- I just, uh, it's an absurd it's, stance. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> because it's it looks like silly. something. Yeah, it's just uh, silly. Therefore, it might be bad. I'm like, uh, I don't know how you do anything, or you know, you know, live at that particular point. But we're talking about the. Um, how do you know it's a person? So. I mean, partly this, we've been on a journey with this as well. And I would say, like, it's always the person at some level. <laughs> it's a good point. It's the Holy yeah. Spirit hitting a person. This is the same person who was there five minutes before with all their wounds and wonderfulness <laughs> and all yeah. their past experiences yeah. Yeah. and their current thoughts. And so it, it's always the person. That, that helped it's, me at some point. level. Yeah. Because, we, again, that idea, if it's God, it has to be pristine. And without human defilement, you're like nothing in the Bible except Jesus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> looks like that. So it's always got a human component or yeah. wrapped up in it. And um, so that that part, like uh, it, it'll always be the person at some level. And sometimes it'll be more than less. And, and when we teach people like, hey, listen, just be responsive. You don't don't overdo it. Uh, and and I, ideally, I, I don't ever say fake it to make it. You know, we never kind of go just practice it, like speak gibberish and you'll start speaking in tongues. Like that's not our way. Uh, start manifesting and, and it'll come. Like it, it, I, I do understand that people will use that sort of thinking. That's not something we teach no. or that, that I do no. at all. No. But it's like if it is a I will be responsive to the least touch of his presence. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's how how hungry are you? Yeah. I don't want to hype. Yeah. I don't want to make anything up. I want to respond to him. Yeah. 
you know, I, I don't know why we're so shocked that we manifest when he touches us. We, we should we'd be, we should be shocked that we don't die when he touches us. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's, let's yeah. be honest. When yeah. the all-powerful one yeah. does something to a person's life, some people say, mm-hmm. well, I don't sense anything. I just have peace. That's not too bad. Yeah, That's, peace is amazing. Yeah, There's a yeah. whole lot of people who don't have inner peace. Exactly. Or just, they live in mental turmoil. The kingdom of God is righteousness, <laughs> peace, and joy. You got a third of the kingdom right there. You're doing pretty well good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's. Uh, I I don't like. Uh, I don't like um, grading someone by their manifestation. No. You know, that's not good either. I, I don't like, well, boy, they were so powerfully touched. Let's, let's see how their life has changed afterwards. Well, and we try not yeah. to judge our culture by who's really anointed and who's not through manifestations. Like, oh, uh, you know, I, uh, we don't see a ton from from you all the time or from Chris or from, you know, various ones. And so it, it's, it is not a sign. And, and I've seen people have powerful manifestations of the Spirit and then make colossal mistakes. Like, <laughs> just exactly. Quickly after, so yeah. some you know, fruit yeah. is helpful, but it's not always. Sometimes the fruit has been not r- right after the fact. It's not beautiful. That's, so, that's the truth. Yeah. So fruits, because um, uh, that that life of character, that ongoing relationship with Jesus is essential. Not this, I shook one time at a, a you know at a yeah. Bill Johnson meeting. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh no, if you live, I shook <laughs> at the I I had a counter of joy at a meeting. You're like oh, well, I don't, what's the Lord doing today? What's he saying today yeah. <laughs> is partly how we need to kind of be living uh, in ongoing yeah. connection with him. I, I agree. I really value what he does. I, I just don't think we always understand what he's doing. Yeah. You, you know, sometimes it's yeah. an extreme manifestation. I mean, I love it when I see incredible power yeah. and a person's, you know, we see people are so powerfully touched, yeah. you know, or people who have never heard in their life, their deaf ears are opened mm-hmm. in, a, in a power encounter, a marriage is healed, uh, these kinds of things. I love that. But I, I, what I don't want to do is devalue the more subtle things that he does. Yeah, I yeah. I, I've, had, I've had two life-altering encounters with the Lord in my life. Mm-hmm. The first one was over a scripture that he opened up to me. Mm-hmm. Every day of my life has been affected since then. It was very subtle. There was nothing dramatic, but I can say 40-some years later, I have never been the same since that moment wow. where he opened up Scripture. Wow. And the other was a, a power encounter. So it's it's both uh, both are valuable. Mm. And this one happened to me first. The, the very subtle, but I it's like Moses, it says, uh, when he stepped aside, the burning bush, when he stepped aside, the Lord spoke. He yeah. stepped aside to what God was doing, and that's when God unloaded on him and and let him hear and see what he needed to see. This subtle moment that I had with the Lord, I stopped. I could take you where I was in the church facility in Weaverville. I can take you where I was. I stopped, I turned aside, and then he began to speak. And it's affected every day of my life. Very subtle, wasn't dramatic, but I I leaned into it. And that's what it Beautiful. Enlarged, yeah, if absolutely. you will, and yeah. so I have you lived great... in the light of that and in in consistency Ab- absolutely. with that. Absolutely, yeah. it's affected how I think. Yeah. It affects everything. Uh, just that, just that one moment, and so that wasn't a great power encounter in a sense of, you know, trembling or falling yeah. or what? weeping or whatever. Okay, so that most of the church loves the first one, the subtle one from the Bible. They love yeah. that. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> they don't like the second one, you know, where you are hit with the lightnings of the Lord and what felt like to you electricity. It it's it's as important. Yeah. It's yeah, as sure. important. I in October of ninety five I had an encounter with the Lord, three mm-hmm. o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, you know, you're never the same again. You, mm-hmm. there, it's throughout the scriptures, you know, mm-hmm. where he encounters with somebody, and and how they manifest it from time to time is, is is completely different. But the the, the point is, is they were touched by him, and their lives are never the same. Yeah, we got we have to value those things. Yeah, you have. I mean, um, you did a book, Defining Moments, where you kind of just captured those the, the in their own words, the author's self description from Finney and from. Wesley and various yep, ones, yep, yep. these sorts of God encounters that had manifestations. And again, uh, oh, there's so much to say. I mean, uh, we are, um, it's interesting to me how we would love tears at the altar, but despise laughter at the altar. It's just like, wow. That's weird, like, huh? That's weird. That's very human Yeah, yeah <laughs> at it, some level. It makes us very uncomfortable yeah. when there's joy. And working through the Psalms right now, there's tons of joy and it's, tons of joy. Yeah, in his presence <laughs> is fullness of joy. Yeah. 
you know, people, where's laughter in the Bible? Well, is laughter a tiny part of joy? Yeah, exactly. Maybe because <laughs> it says in his presence is fullness uh, of joy. I have a theory. Like, I think it's the, the church is dumbing down of joy. We have made joy inner peace. Wow. And, uh, you know, and it's almost like we, it's like, no, no, it's actually that, it's that thing when your team wins the Super Bowl. It's yeah. that like out of control, you know, you do a somersault off the couch sort of joy yeah. yep. that this ecstatic place, which is actually quite marvelous. You know, if you've ever had the privilege of having your team win the Super Bowl. But, yeah, <laughs> but this, uh, this this human capacity for joy is so much larger than this inner this inner um, satisfaction that is quietly expressed. It's true. Call. It's true. I, I like to de I define peace as quiet joy mm -hmm. and joy as peace out loud. All right. Oh. Boom. You're so pithy. Oh, that's the, yeah. pithy. <laughs> and then also just say our bodies are designed to uh, respond in some ways. Yeah, like we, yeah. you know, if, if my wife's mad at me, which hardly ever happens, but I can feel like <laughs> in my body, like I think somebody's mad at me <laughs> at some level. So, so we are, we are designed like, so if we're physically cold, we shiver. If we, if, you know, we, we get hit by actual physical electricity, we, you know, we shake. So I mean, like our bodies are wonderful instruments to, Discern That's what's true. happening That's in the true. environment, discern what's happening <laughs> internally, and then be responsive to it. So the, the idea that the Lord would hit us physically, super normal. And um, and all through Scripture. Yeah. All, and unusually all through Scripture. Yeah. Again, go look at it on yourself. It's You, you just you will find it everywhere. The Bible, brothers and sisters, the Bible is full of spooky, weird scary. stories. <laughs> and scary stories. I mean, Saul wants to go kill David. He sends a man to kill David. And he, he walks through a bunch of people who are prophesying is hit by the power of the Holy Spirit and is unable to go and fulfill this co this command, this assignment to go murder David. Yeah, yeah. And he ends up prophesying. So Saul gets fed up with him <laughs> and goes himself. <laughs> I'll kill him. Those prophets aren't going to impact me. He, he He's on a murder assignment and he goes into the into the environment, the atmosphere, the area. Again, people are like, why is it the Spirit here and not here? Like, I don't know. But Saul in the Bible had this experience. He's He yeah, walks through right. the area where... The people of God are prophesying an ecstatic prophecy, yeah. and he himself is suddenly prophesying an ecstatic prophecy. So what the people are saying that is now is Saul now num numbered among the uh, the prophets. Yep, yep. It's amazing. It's the guy just, who doesn't want it hit by power, and again, the fruit of his life, he was yeah. wasn't per permanently changed. He actually, I think, did dial back his pursuit of trying to kill David for a while. Yeah. But but uh, but there was he, fruit, but he didn't sustain. He could have been. Yeah. yeah, he certainly could have been. Yep. But uh, but his response is that's it is we have a responsibility to steward how God touches us what He does to us. Yep. The outcome is not guaranteed. Yep. You know, uh, Jesus talks about healing ten lepers. Only one had enough character change to come back and give thanks, but the other nine were still healed. So does that disqualify that as a work of God? Mm. The the absence of fruit in your life? No. Mm. The fruit was the healing. Was, yeah, absolutely. The transformation is our response to his work. And the one responded. That's powerful. Yeah. So, hey, let the Lord touch us with all our heart, soul, Amen. mind, body, and strength. And then sometimes people have thought what uh, that, uh, this idea, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit versus another spirit, a demonic spirit? Some, uh, the internet, again, has uh, created uh, something I've never heard of, the, the or hadn't really heard of, the Kundalini spirit, and somehow that that's in operation here. Um, uh, again, I... I never no, heard of it till I was accused of it. I didn't even. Yeah, so that's yeah. another another deal like that. And again, you could the, the the critic could say, well, you can't just because you're ignorant doesn't mean it's not true, or whatever else. But the the basic idea is a fallacy because it looks mm -hmm. like something else. It yeah. it is something else. And so again, we're talking about the fruit of our life, and then this idea that we're actually in relationship with this divine being, with the with the Lord. I'm talking about Yahweh, the covenant God of the Old Testament. We're in relationship with Him, so we yeah. are not afraid. And we know his voice. My sheep know my voice. So yeah, yeah. I, I know, like, this is the spirit of love and truth and integrity. This this being whom I'm experiencing his presence in the moment, this yeah. is holiness. Yeah, this is perfect exactly. goodness. There's no, there's no, I don't wonder aloud, like, might this be a demon? You know, <laughs> in those yeah. moments, never, uh, it doesn't cross my mind because of the integrity of the experience. Exactly. That's happening. So Exactly. I think we're supposed to learn to recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit just in our own personal life, mm -hmm. not just in a ministry context, yeah. but just in life. Because when I learn to recognize his presence, it's much easier for me to discern the authenticity of 
maybe somebody's testimony, yeah. maybe uh, the decision you're about to make, uh, maybe the manifestation of them physically. You can you, you start to recognize him when he's doing something, and it's a lot easier. I was in a situation way back at the beginning where I was surrounded by what appeared to be chaos just because of the numbers of people. Mm -hmm. I closed my eyes so that I could cancel out what I was seeing, and I, and I became overwhelming, overwhelmingly aware it's the same presence of the Holy Spirit that I experienced in my, in my worship time with the Lord. And, wow. it, and as long as wow. I wasn't offended in my mind by what I didn't understand, I was anchored, if you will. I was, I was anchored in a recognizing this is God. And then I was able to, to then begin to respond more positively, appropriately towards what was happening yeah. around me. Yeah. And this is just a portion of our walk with Jesus. This isn't in every meeting. It's not in every devotional time. It's not in every uh, you know yeah. session of school by any stretch of the imagination. We have folks who have profound physical experiences and then don't for a long time. Um, yeah. Or, and you talk about turning aside. There are times when I I won't have any, but I'll get into a prayer ministry time when suddenly I can experience His presence physically. Yeah. And emotionally, in like a deeper, yeah. more dear way, yeah. than kind of in my own quiet time, yeah. you know, alone. Um, and then I think the other part is like, how do you know it's not the enemy? We do ask that, like when we're pastoring environments. So you got to know how to pastor the environment. But I'll see some manifestations where I've kind of walked up to people, introduced myself, told them my role, so that I, I have authority. And mm -hmm. you know, they're not, they're not, they're not. And I'm not. We're not afraid of wrecking what God's doing. When the Lord's in it, you're not going to wreck it because uh, I'm not coming as a mocker right, or you know, right. to a, an accuser. I'd be like, hi, I'm Dan, one of the pastors here. This looks very intense, what you're experiencing. Yeah. Is this the Lord? You know, and then I, yeah. they can, sometimes they can, they have told me, they've just nodded yes, you know, and um, because they can't speak, it's so intense the experience. Like, exactly, yeah. And like, so you're physically fine, you're not having a stroke or anything, and you know, be like, yeah, they'll nod yes, and I'm like, okay. Other times I'll, I'll talk with them and say, hey, you know, are you doing all right? Are you scared? And they'll nod yes. And you're like, do you feel, is this the Lord or the demonic? So we're actually pastoring in that moment. That's huge. Um, and again, I don't have to do it all the time because all of our meetings are not nearly anything like this. But you do have to have leadership in the environment. And some conversations happen in the moment. Uh, there, are, And then some happen afterwards. Like, hey, your response to the Lord's presence, is I know it's meaningful to you. It's incredibly distracting to the rest of us. So we're going to need you to... To, yeah. to dial in, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in a way that actually doesn't distract from the meeting, yeah. you know, at this yeah. time, or yeah. that isn't drawing so much attention. <laughs> Even though your heart might not be to draw attention, that is what's happening. So exactly. it's um in our in our culture, we're not afraid to confront those sorts of no. things as we need to. So we'll let them go a little long. Like we'll just we'll let them go a little <laughs> long. I, I remember one time we we're in a um we we're in a uh, a joy filled meeting, and um, a woman was on her knees. She came to the middle of the altar, sorry, the middle of the aisle, the center altar, and she is on her knees crying out, It's the blood! It's the blood! It's the blood! And, and worship's going, it's loud, there's joyous praise everywhere. But I remember that moment thinking the, it wasn't an act of praise that she was involved in in that moment, but I'm like, Lord, this could be you. Like, she could be the lone person. We could all be uh, in a mode, like, it's yeah. time to experience joy, let's do our thing. And she could have been the lone person, actually, like, I'm this, the Lord's, I'm, I'm interested in you pondering my sacrifice tonight. I'm interested in you pondering wow, the sacredness wow. of my self-giving love. So I'm listening and trying to, like, how do you do it? I don't know how to describe what I'm doing. I'm trying to do more than my mind and more than my taste, more than my preference, and yeah. more than my emotions. Excellent, excellent. And try to listen, like, Lord, is this you? Are you on this young woman taking us in a direction? So I just let her go on for a while. Now, other people were noticing, but they saw me like 10 feet behind her, and they're like, okay, good, a, leader, a leader's paying attention. Right. And um, so then she, I come up and I say, you know, at the end, my, my discernment was like, this isn't what the Lord's doing tonight. And so I kind of just sat down and introduced myself. We had a great conversation about what, you know, what the Lord was doing with her. And I kind of gently said, it, I love what the Lord's doing. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be quite what's corporately happening. So, you know, if you'd like to kind of continue in this, maybe uh, just in a, in a less obvious place or a less quiet, quiet in a more quiet way, yeah. uh, I'd love to facilitate that. Or, or it might be that it, your assignment's been done and, and it's time to join the Lord in praising for his glorious sacrifice, you know? So just like letting her process That's beautiful. what she was up to in that moment. That's beautiful. And, um, and, and not, getting, um, not getting kind of locked up and oh, what are people gonna think? And, yeah. and this isn't exactly what the group's doing. And I, I just recommend that sort of. Benny has a fun story. I don't know if you remember it, where there was a. I'm going to take the time to tell the story. So, there's a young woman dancing in the front in a somewhat provocative fashion, close to you oh. during worship. 
Yeah, that was actually that was actually my story. Oh. Yeah, she was dancing yeah. in front of me in a very strange way. Yeah. And I it got cold around me, physically cold. Mm. Mm. And I so I walked about ten feet away to see uh, if the if the room was just cold. I got about ten feet away and it was normal. Mm -hmm. I got back close to her. I remembered an experience that my brother had mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. horrible sp spiritual yeah. time with his ministry in San Francisco and stuff. And it reminded me of his description of, that, yeah. of that encounter. Yeah. And so I went over to Summer, who is our dancer, yeah. Yeah. and I said, Summer, I need you to dance before the Lord. We need to break something. And then I turned to my wife and I said, honey, I, I need you to pray for her. And, uh, and literally, the moment Summer began to dance before the Lord, this gal collapsed right in front of me. And it was, it was a, it was a hor horrible demonic thing, very s subtle but horrible. She collapsed in front of me. Benny, my wife, leaned forward and began to pray for her, just brought her through great deliverance into salvation. And it, it, it ended up being a very uh, amazing thing. But yeah. it started by not just visually, uh, what yeah. she was doing. It started because of a temperature change. Interesting, yeah. And, and then it reminds me of Hebrews 5, having your senses trained to discern good and evil. Wow. That there was yeah. actually something triggered that seemed to be more biblical than my experience was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. historically. Yeah. That, that that had never happened before. Well, and yeah. then the folks who were, that were part of that story from the outside, they were just offended at what she was doing and that she was so, you know, Sure. So so much in your environment and doing that. So there's sure. that moment where we didn't act in utter response to that offense, but act, actually acted in, hey, let's let's uh, move with spiritual authority yeah, in yeah, this area yeah. and with kindness in this or Yeah, there's area. a redemptive solution. Yeah. yeah so when it's the devil, you, you you know it uh, oftentimes. Yeah. No, that's 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 the truth. <laughs> Absolutely. So to be clear, not everybody has to manifest. And not every denomination, not every church has to have these manifestations going no, on. That's not what we're saying. To be truly spiritual or truly connected to God or truly represent, you got to no. do it like us. That's No, no. <laughs> it's just hunger for God. Let him yeah. do what he does, you know. So we would say everybody should be hungry. I, I hope so. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you, you can't have God offer something that extreme, that extravagant, that extraordinary and sit and do nothing. Yeah. You know, he welcomes us to come and to seek him. He's already here, yes, yeah. but to seek him more diligently, to set our face towards him and to seek him more diligently. It's the great privilege of life. Yeah. So cultivating the yeah. hunger and then responding to his presence in the way that he comes, uh, just with auth as much authenticity as you can bring to that. Yeah. So the great revivals of the church oftentimes had these manifestations of various oh. kinds, and um, we don't we don't quite talk about them a lot. We talk about their fervent prayer, but they, you can go back into the record if it hasn't been sanitized or, you know, they haven't kind of changed the stories a little bit. Yep, and yep. the old revivals, uh, full of unusual signs and wonders, manifestations of the Lord's presence on the meeting, on the movement. You got... Yeah. yeah. It, they, uh, denominations tend to want to clean up the record of the moves of God that they've experienced. The Shantung revival in China is a great example. Um, there is a book out on the Shantung Revival that will bore you to tears because it tells you about all the maybe outcomes of this, these, this number, this church, this missionary, but not the process. And the process is where God radically touched this family, radically touched this church, this child, and, and it brought about incredible fruit for his name. And, uh, and so there are two versions of that book. Randy yeah. Clark, our yeah. dear friend, uh, republished the book uh, in the original content so you could see what actually happened. And this is, it's dialogue between missionaries of what's happening in their part of the world. And uh, it's extraordinary to see the, the, the mighty outpouring wow. of the Holy Spirit. The Cane Ridge Revival went on for many, many years, and it was very unusual. <laughs> but uh, but it, was, it was so powerful, so legitimate. And uh, oftentimes what happens is these great moves of God, they have a, a, an offensive element to it that's, yeah. that always seems to be the case. The Lord does not mind offending in these great moves of God. No, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, one, one of our friends from years ago said, uh, he will offend your mind to reveal your heart. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. happens so much. Mm -hmm. But these, these great moves of God, they will actually so position society and culture to advance in the years following the revival that really, really is quite extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, real transformation takes place. So it, it's a glorious thing, but uh, uh, but it doesn't do any of us favors to whitewash history to, to 
until it looks like what we want it to look. Yes, yeah. it's, it's just not honest. Well, be- beautiful. I, that's been part of the journey. I mentioned like discovering that spiritual discernment wasn't just my taste or past experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, those really feel very similar inside. What I, my taste, what I prefer, and my past experience does. Like, it's, I discern, brother, that's the devil. So I have to be really cautious. <laughs> well, it, and it's an arrogant position. It's like... Well, ouch, Bill, but yes. yes, yes. <laughs> well, for I'm all getting of better. <laughs> for all of us. I'm talking about me. Come on. Where, where you look at something and you go, well, that can't be God. And basically the judge is, he didn't do it to me first. So why would he do it to you? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, it's just a poor standard of, of judging things. Yeah. So look at look back in past revivals, find the find the first sources if you can, yeah. and not the later ones where we they they were sanitized. And by sanitized, we we took out the spooky stuff, the unusual yeah. stuff that isn't quite in the scripture, but not forbidden from scripture. You know, and but unusual experiences. And yeah. almost always, in every great move of God, there have been these experiences. It's, um, it's true. So what about if you come from a church, though, that doesn't? Like, you know, there's, there's lots of traditions. I, I was I came from a non-charismatic church, and, mm-hmm. and um, so, uh, you know, always wanted the Lord to do whatever he wanted. But, you know, my, I was just taught that this is what church is like, and this is what's normal. And yet, you know, we were hungry for the Lord. And we would have said we were hungry for the Lord. Some of us more hungry than others, you sure. know, at some point. Sure. But do you have a sense of, like, why some churches move, uh, have experiences of these manifestations and other places don't? I, I don't know. I think the risk element is a part of it. So if it, you don't like risk, you probably won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. usually. I mean, oh, the Lord can cross the line and, and touch yeah. you any way he wants. No, he I does mean, do it's that all, too, It's all yeah. through Scripture, yeah. you know. Um, but typically, typically our hunger precedes a great outpouring. Not mm-hmm. always, mm-hmm. not always. But uh, typically, hunger, or hunger for more. Just that realization: there is so much more to walking with Jesus than what I know, yeah. and I'm just hungry. And there are a whole school that would throw up alarms at that point and say, "You have to be careful for deception." But Jesus made that pretty clear. He said, "You know, he, he's not going to give you a stone." Yeah. Instead of bread, he's not going to give you a scorpion instead of a fish. He's not going to, you're not going to pursue him and then have him trick you and allow you to get into a, a deceptive thing. Unless you've got personal issues that you're unwilling to repent of, then of course there are other factors. Or you're involved. completely outside community and can't have, can't, can't have exactly. any interaction exactly. you know, with them. Sometimes that'll happen. So yeah. the other, um, you know, maybe why it doesn't happen is sometimes we, you know, you kind of get what you teach. Like we, we, we don't. We used to have more public um, uh, uh, public prophecy accompanied with tongues because we would teach on it. Yes. We were smaller. We had a microphone up at the front for right, it. Right. And people would take the risk. And uh, they'd, ha- they'd speak to us. I feel like the Lord's saying this, and then they would jump up. But exactly. we don't know. Uh, now we have a church full of visitors. We can't quite take the risk in our main meetings. It doesn't make sense to. We don't know everybody that's in the room. Um, so we and we don't teach into that. So when you don't teach something, you kind of yeah. don't get it yeah, at some point. True. So that'd be part. I would say part of what happens. It's and true. my own experience too is I, I as being a you know a kind of a not very charismatic leader in a charismatic church in the early '90s here. I I just found that my comfortable like first of all I didn't know what the anointing was like the idea of the anointing like really didn't have a grid for it. Yeah. It wasn't something we talked about. Um, we, if we did, it was purely emotional. Like that, you just—that's a code word for your your an emotionless. You, you know, you do emotions. Um, but I remember, like, I was uncomfortable leading my people in anything I couldn't sustain. Yeah. So, like, if I get super hungry, I might not be super hungry in three weeks. <laughs> wow. So, like, I'm not. I don't want to take you to the edge and go. I actually can't follow through with that. So wow. I I, wow. I stuck with my skills with my gifts, what I knew that I could do for the Lord's glory. Like, why venture into some place that I'm not comfortable? Yeah, I, I'm totally dependent on the Lord to show up. You know, I, I can actually prepare a pretty decent sermon even if he doesn't show up. I'm, I'm not being critical, but I mean, like, you know, I can, it's from the Bible, it's accurate. Right, Everybody can right. go amen. But I, I, I remember some of the, the signs and wonders and the manifestations, they were uncomfortable to me as a leader. And again, I'm not throwing a rock at any leader. I'm telling you my own story. Yep. Is like, I was like, I don't, I can't sustain this. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm afraid to move into it and uh, aggressively. So that might be something that some of our our leaders are like. I don't. I've never been trained in this. And I'll tell you, going through Bible school and stuff, I wasn't trained in this. How to lead a meeting in faith. Right, how right. to how to experience Holy Spirit and power. You know. Um, yep. You know how to prophesy. These were not. These were not seminary classes on how to prophesy. <laughs> well, you know, when I first came, Actually, I must say, see Peter Wagner. I took a couple classes from him. 
Yeah, and it's fuller, and I, and I did, yeah. Was, I did get a, some, some insight into that. When I first came, you remember, certain things began to happen yeah. uh, within and a I didn't short, like short period of time. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and, uh, and Alan Ray, yeah. one of our key guys on staff, came to me privately. He said, you know, he said, we want to help you pastor this, but we're learning at the same pace as yeah. the people. Yeah. Can we meet privately? Yeah. And I thought, brilliant idea. So yeah. I brought a team down from Weaverville yeah. and Hay Fork and, and met in, uh, yeah. in a home. Yeah. And then our teams just prayed for it. And all, all that happened was the presence of God showed up. The power of God showed up in a very wonderful way. Yeah. And it just put our, lead, our, our staff yeah. You know, two weeks ahead of everyone else. Yeah, and that's yeah, all we needed. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. all we needed was, was just that much. I was much maybe like noted. two days after those meetings, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Still. yeah but, <laughs> but that's the point. Is yeah. it? It gave us a point of reference together. Where literally we're learning together. You have yeah. to. You have to become a novice to grow. Uh, you know, Jesus, he said, I'm so glad you didn't reveal these things to the educated, to the wise, the mm -hmm. learned, that you reveal it to babes. And sometimes you have to become childlike to really get what God is saying, what mm -hmm. he's doing. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to all of us, is, yeah. is we were reduced positively to, yeah. to being childlike. Yeah. Well, and I remember the first time I saw a fire tunnel, like I didn't, I was <laughs> uncomfortable, I didn't like it. If you don't know, uh, a fire tunnel, <laughs> instead of uh, people standing on prayer lines or being at the altar, you get people on both sides and they're they're facing each other, like almost like they can make a tunnel if they put their hands together at the top. And then we had people walk through and then there would be, sometimes the fire tunnels are very relatively tame. They're just like, there's elusive blessing or, you know, some sort yeah. of, but sometimes they can get quite chaotic. And in our environment, they got some. They got pretty chaotic sometimes. People busting out of the tunnel and onto the floor and you know, stuck places. So I remember telling you, like after that, the first one we ever did, I'm like, yeah, Bill, I'm not comfortable with that. And you're like, oh, Dan, you don't have to be involved. You just stand at the back, and as you feel comfortable, yeah, you know, move closer. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I it was like you never like my job was never on the line. Like I got to get this or not. There was no coercion. No. There was nothing of that. It was just like. Just taste and see. Just, just you know, be in the room and yeah. where these things are happening, and um, and see what the Lord does. And so that sort of freedom that you gave uh, yeah. me, and yeah. that that it wasn't groupthink or manipulation, was super. It, it helped me feel well the integrity and the authenticity of your connection with Jesus, right. and that it wasn't about hey, we're all doing this. You know, are you in or you're out? Sort of deal. But it was like we're just experiencing the Lord's presence. Yeah. You know, at the rate that He is, that yeah. we can, yeah. and that He's revealing Himself. And so I was always appreciative of your yeah. tenderness oh, with me, oh, good. Yeah. with my my big brain. It's, I know it's not very big, but I think you know I, I like to live in my brain. So, <laughs> well, you, you may remember when we first started praying for people, ministering to people in the in the sanctuary. There, we put them on lines or yeah. however we did it. We always kept a space in the back of several rows. I said, no, if you're not comfortable, yeah. but you want to observe, you're free to do that. Yeah. And so and that's okay, because we all all have a different pace yeah. by which we evaluate, we think through, we process, we dialogue with friends, we pray. And uh, it, it, it just you don't win anything by forcing people or yeah. manipulating them. And, uh, and as yeah. we said, we don't expect yeah. every church to, to, to look like us or to move in these things. And it takes a great variety and diversity of church experience and expression. Yeah. Uh, there was a season in my life when I, you know, the, the quiet, the, the reading the word, reading the whole liturgy together with the community was the most healing. I, you know, I'd go into an Episcopal church yeah. and we would read the liturgy. Yeah. I, no dynamic sermons at all, but, uh, but I was... Yeah. Saying aloud the liturgy, and it was healing to me in this time of brokenness or desperation I was in in that yeah, moment. That's so beautiful. we need all sorts of expressions of <clears throat> church. That's and, the point. We need <clears throat> in diversity. It's not just yeah. tolerated. It's it's there's some things pretty special there Absolutely. That, we, that we need to value. I agree. So let's look at one particular manifestation that was personally very offensive when I <laughs> when I began to hear it. And um, was being drunk in the spirit, and uh, we call it holy laughter, kind of either one of those sorts of things. And so, what do you mean by that? It, you know, when we when we talk about it, what's your your experience of this manifestation of being drunk in the spirit? And well, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts two, Peter's response was, "These this hundred and twenty, they're not drunk like you think they are." So, in other words, there must have been some sort of a response they had to God touching them that gave the appearance of being drunk. Yeah. Um, so let, let's set the stage so that they, okay. they're hit with the tongues of fire. 
And then there's a, the sound of a wind. I'm not sure there's a wind actually mentioned. The sound of a wind. Uh, sound there. of wind, fire, and, um, and tongues. And then they come yeah. out, they stumble out into the streets, yeah. and they are declaring the praises of God in languages that are known by the people, by the Jews who had gathered to Jerusalem. Exactly. And they could hear them declaring the praises of God. But in the midst of that, I think it's verse 13, chapter 2, he said, they are drunk. <laughs> Yeah. So the God hits them with power. It's the promise to uh, he said I'll give you my holy spirit and you'll receive witnesses. Yep. You'll be power to be witnesses. Yep. And then the power comes and it results in this these unusual manifestations like it, it's interesting how the Lord doesn't mind gathering a crowd. He's like, "You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a big tornado noise." With no tornado, they'll get them out of their houses, you know, and then they see these guys speaking praises to God in a known in a language. But to your point, they must have been behaving. If I see a, a person speaking with a different accent or a different dialect, and they're actually declaring, I can hear them declaring God's praises. I do not say they're drunk. Do you know exactly. what I'm saying? I, I, don't, exactly. I, I don't see somebody from a different illogical. ethnicity, yeah. uh, you know, speaking a language. I figure like, well, they've learned that language or, you know, uh, and wow, I love that they're praising the Lord. This is no. a beautiful, articulate praise. I do not say they're dr no, dirty drunks and, or and whatever. Ne and neither will it gather a crowd of thousands. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have people, a, a city. There's that, lots of drunk people in the streets. <laughs> a thousand people don't gather around them. <laughs> It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was your point. But go ahead. So you have your Bible it, open. It just yeah. says, uh, it says, when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. Yep. It says they were confused. Yep. They were amazed. They marveled in verse 7. In verse 12, it says they were amazed and perplexed. Yep. And in verse 13, it says they were mocking. <laughs> so those who think when God shows up, everybody just adapts quickly. It's they, just not everybody true. Everybody jumps on board. No, no it's just no, not true. No. It's 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 just messy. It's it's my favorite verse for this is where there's no oxen, the manger is clean, yeah. but much increase comes through the strength of the ox. Yeah. So when you have something happen like this, there's going to be messes because he's working with people. Yeah. You know, he's, he's working with imperfect people that are going to yeah. respond and sometimes, uh, you know, be careless. Sometimes uh, exaggerate. Sometimes try to control. Um, all of those things happen. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't seem to be as offensive to him as it is to us. Mm -hmm. I, I think my favorite part of that verse is where Peter's defense, he just he declares they're not drunk. And he doesn't say, these are holy men. We're followers of Jesus. <laughs> he goes, it's too early in the day for them to be this drunk. <laughs> so again, it's That's like awesome. I'm not denying the what you're seeing. Like I'm not trying to explain away the behaviors you're seeing. That's excellent. And that yeah. you're hearing. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, hey, think about it, guys. Isn't it too early to actually be physically drunk, right? Yeah. That's his defense. And then he unpacks how this is a uh, fulfillment of, the, of Joel, uh, chapter 2. So it's just beautiful. Uh, interesting, though, but, but he can't deny the manifestations. That's right. That's right. Again, this is implicit. It's not explicit in Scripture that they were behaving drunk. And again, so, I mean, the, the, the be, what, do, what are those people observing, just thinking through that? Well, you know, some negative things, you know, that uh, we could think about. Some people are drunk due to violence. We, I don't think that's happening. Some are, some are getting sick. I don't think that's happening. But they are uh, being, oh, they're uninhibited by yeah. uh, convention. They, you know, they are overwhelmed uh, with the Lord, with the, the glory of the Lord. So I don't care who's looking uh, like somebody who's intoxicated would be. Yeah. Maybe you find yourself sitting somewhere that you'd like, why am I sitting in the gutter? You know, because like, you know, in, the, in this yeah. place, it's like I, you're sitting places doing things you wouldn't normally do with this experience of the, of, of the Lord's presence. So as a young man, I had spent my whole Christianity never being drunk. And it was offensive to me to hear, time to get drunk in the Lord. Yeah. So I had yeah. a total stumbling block to the even the imagery of like how could that imagery be used by the Lord yeah, yeah and, and it's it's painful for those who have come out of alcoholism oh, yeah, too oh yeah you know, I've had conversations probably more so yeah, yeah. Uh, real, real offensive and I and I understand that and I I don't want to teach drunkenness as a as a point of theology it's just yeah. you know it's it's sometimes what happens well it's a, it, it, the, the, if you got if Pharaoh's you know, magicians can make counterfeit snakes of Moses. You, dr drunk with alcohol is a counterfeit of spiritual joy. It, there it is. Yeah, it is a, it is. a counterfeit That's of right. spiritual joy. So some folks like looking for spiritual joy is not is not a problem. It's how you how you yeah. uh, experience it and what you access to to obtain it. Um, a phrase I think Randy Clark uh, uses uh, comes to mind: "Tears are to repentance what joy is to salvation." Hmm. Can you unpack tear, that a little bit? Tears yeah. are to repentance what laughter is to salvation. There you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And as, as we accept the tears, as you mentioned yeah. a while back, 
But it, it's, it's just all a part of it. The drunkenness of Acts 2 or whatever it was they had, it was something that helped to gather a crowd of people. And, uh, and there was the preaching. But underneath it all is they were in these languages declaring the greatness of God in yeah. Acts 2 verse 11. They're declaring his wonders. And uh, so, so underneath all that, you have that whole thing of like it, it. It's one of the weird things that watching somebody have a spiritual experience is weird. Yeah. <laughs> just, like I remember being a young man watching like worship on TV. You know, at uh, just whatever, because Sunday morning TV used to have like a ton of people worshiping, and like, yeah. and they could be passionately. You know, their faces were passionate, their ar arms were raised. But I, as a believer, I'm like. Oh, that just looks awkward. That's not good TV. I'm like thinking that in my head. Yeah. So there's lots of experiences in the Lord that when you stand as an observer, they're they're not lovely to look at. <laughs> no, that's uh, most of the things in revival are not lovely to look at. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it, you they know, don't make I, for good TV. They're not good. There's not marketability. There's not broad appeal. <laughs> it's only good TV if you were there. <laughs> if you're there, yeah, it, you it know, kindles oh, your affection. Yeah. yeah, you're like I remember that day when it's, the Lord met us so powerfully, and affection true. rises in your heart. Yeah. It's, so watching it, no, not, I, I don't. I don't enjoy it. Like, <laughs> I, I've, I've likened. I, I bought all my kids these little geodes. You know. Okay. 25 yeah. years ago because it reminded me of revival. The outside is just this ugly thing in appearance. You crack it open, there's these beautiful uh, colors and crystals and all this stuff. Yeah. That, uh, that, that to me is, is a great move of God. It's on the outside. It is offensive. It just yeah. is. But when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to put into language what God just did for you. Absolutely. But you would do anything for him. You would do anything. You'd take a bullet any day. It's like, this is why I was alive. Why I'm alive. I was born for this, yeah. and uh, it's you only get that on the inside. You don't get it on the outside. Totally. And we have this uh, with our students that not you know not every day is a Holy Spirit encounter day and you know full yeah, of joy and yeah, laughter, yeah. but enough are. And you will get you know there's videos online of our students just in piles you know um, <laughs> of just enjoying the presence of the Lord and each other you know and. Um, uh, it, it it like I said, it's not a great look on TV, you know, lots of yeah. students are on the on the internet. But I know that the encounter those students are having are precious yeah, and absolutely. are lifelong, like foundational stones in the absolutely. Lord. And um and the Lord's doing a beautiful work there. So I just again I have to just not be offended at that. And um you know, we've talked about the students like, hey, when you go someplace, we, you know, you probably don't fall into a, a pile on the floor if that <laughs> if that environment isn't ready for it and if that church doesn't love that or like yeah. that. Like Hey, you know, the, uh, we talk about that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, the general, uh, oftentimes the, the Holy Spirit isn't radically overwhelming, so you can't do anything about it. Oftentimes you can. No, that's that's true. Kind that's of like, true. kind of get it, get it together. I'm using air quotes there, yeah. and then do the thing that that the Lord's been asking you to do. Um, uh, just a couple stories about that. We had, I had one ser uh, service sometime in, in this when. I was the only, for, on a Friday night, I was the only pastor that showed up that night. Just for some reason, I was the only one. Oh, so wow. I kind of, I, I opened the meeting, I did the offering, I closed the worship, <laughs> and I did the whole deal. And I had to preach that night too. So, And the Lord hit me with joy, like, during the worship. And so I'm like, Lord, I got no backup here. I got to do this. Like, this is, <laughs> this is not, and then I'm not, I'm not the big joy guy. Like, I mean, so this is unusual. So I was like, loving it and appreciative, and yet also going, Papa, not now. Not, like, this is not a good <laughs> It's not a good time. So it was a weird moment where I kind of got up and and was experiencing this sort of intoxicated. My thoughts were cloudy. I would have rather been quiet and just been resting in his presence, you know, just kind of, uh, it, you know, just um, not preaching, you know, in that moment. Yep, yep. And uh, just just enjoying this moment of joy. But for some reason, I thought, the, the well, the word had to be preached that night. And so I just like held on to the sides of the pulpit <laughs> and I got through it, uh, you know, and it, and at the end, I'm like, Lord, you know, I kind of got through that. And he's like, and I just felt like from the father, that's sort of like, yeah, I'm not sure why you did that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Again, those are, that's his words through my inner, inner voice. But yeah, at some point yeah. I'm like, he was like, I, like I was just inter determined, like you got to get through the, 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 yeah, the sermon. And he that. was showing up to do something different. And I just thought, I got I to gotta do this. So you can, like I found in that moment, you can resist and eventually oh, yeah. kind of just sh shake it off. Because um, that, that's what I did, the spirit of the prophet, subject to the prophet. Like he, at that point, if you, that verse I'm quoting in Corinthians, they were all prophesying on top of each other in an ecstatic moment. As soon as the utterance, the anointing's on me, I got to speak it out. And he's like, no, no, it doesn't work that way. It's not going to go away. Yeah. Wait your turn. One at a time. We'll discern right. the word. <laughs> so uh, in, in that in that moment. But I was... 
it's possible for the Lord to come and for you to kind of like, you know, not overly respond to it. So sometimes we'll talk to the students. Like oh, yeah. if you're going and mis- ministering in a church that doesn't have these experiences, please, yeah. you know. Exactly. Uh, you know, be gracious and kind to the environment and reflect their core values. Yeah, uh, they, exactly. they, they love the presence of the Lord. They just experience it in a little different way. And so be in cooperation with that. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And plus the goal is not to draw attention yeah. to ourselves. Yeah. It's uh, it's. It, it happens at times because of what he does in us, but it's it's never the goal, and it's not necessarily a measure of spirituality. And so uh, it's not haves and haves not. It's yeah. not we have this and you don't. It's, anytime we get into that area, it, it's very, very dangerous because yeah. then the spiritual pride enters in and it defiles whatever God was doing That's in us. Well said, yeah. So I'm I'm over being offended by drunkenness. Uh, and uh, <laughs> But I, I've changed, like I, I intoxicated with his presence, Uninhibited in his presence, yeah. like uh, I mean, uh, maybe substitute. Is great, yeah, you kind a of great substitute term. those yeah. a little bit, and yeah. that kind of helps me find kind of my grounding in that. Yeah, yeah. So in, in all these areas, I think partly what I've, well, we've all been on this learning journey of it. You know, not everybody has to look like us or think like us. You know, and and um, you know this that we have the pristine, you know, uh, gospel and you don't, or the like the full right, gospel right, and right, you don't, or all these right, sorts of right. things. But it, I do think it's important for the Church of Jesus Christ to be listening. Um, it's actually crucial that we listen, not like legalists, but like lovers. Like, yeah. I I love you, and I I I know that you love the Lord. Like, I'm disagreeing with you. I'm uncomfortable with what I'm seeing. I'm right. concerned. Right, right. But I love you, and you're going to experience not just like my love. I can just like I, I put up with you until you start behaving like me. But I actually. Yeah really genuinely are seeking your highest and best good. Yeah. And I think as we're, as uh, partly my journey through this whole thing was just recognizing the real love that was in people who were experiencing manifestation. Some of the leaders that were, they were full of love and they were not mandating this was the new thing everybody must be doing. They're like, I'm hungry, yep. I'm walking in love. And so I, part of this has been a graciousness, learning with, gener- uh, listening with generosity to the experiences of our brothers and sisters, like, you know, uh, in the faith, yeah. you know, I, instead of listening uh, like a legalist uh, um, and being appreciative of the, the variety of expressions and experiences that people have with the Lord has been part of our journey. At least it has been for me, yeah. breaking me out of that kind of arrogance, um, self uh, group centric sort of thinking and realizing all that the Lord can accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Just celebrating celebrating other people mm-hmm. and God's unique touch on them too because he, he'll touch me differently than he touches you. And yeah, if I don't yeah. have a value for how he works in and through you and upon you, then I'm going to measure. And I'll either become yeah. greater than you or I'll become less than you and I can never measure up. But it's always, it's always wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's always unhealthy. <laughs> it's and, good. Uh, and so being able to celebrate the uniqueness of God's touch on another person yeah. I think is important. And you, and you talk about honor as I'm going to celebrate who you are without being offended by who you're not yes, in some ways. Yeah. And so for the whole church could kind of like kind of step towards that. Yes. I'm going to celebrate who you are and what you're doing without yes. being offended yeah. with who you're not. Yeah. And uh, trust that those folks are on a journey just like we are of becoming like Christ. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So one of the manifestations that we experienced was the glory cloud. It's about mm-hmm. 2011. And this, uh, this glitter-like substance was just kind of up along the ceiling, kind of moving in the the air currents of the room, but not all the air currents of the room that we could see. Like, I remember being mesmerized by that and also flabbergasted. Just, yeah, totally. I had no, I had no words. I had no, like, I, my brain couldn't compute what's happening in that moment. No. What, what was going on with you with the glory cloud? Well, the same. I had heard <laughs> about it, you know, in yeah. history. I had heard about it, that sort of thing happening. I actually had friends that had that experience and, uh, and when it started happening, it actually started happening at our Friday night meetings uh, three weeks before I ever saw it happen. Mm-hmm. And then it just started happening on Sunday night. It would happen late in the evening mm-hmm. after most people had gone. And then it started moving up earlier, earlier than— And like so some of our maintenance team would see it late in the evening sort of deal? Yeah, or, yeah, okay, yeah, And yeah. they would they'd, they'd talk or the, about it? Or, or, the, or our team that was— uh, just finishing praying for people because okay, we always end with, yeah, yeah, always end with praying. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was happening then, and then it started moving up, and it started moving up towards the mini- the beginning of ministry time, and then eventually it started right at the beginning of the service. Yeah, and it was it was very, very unusual, um, 
it just it just put an awe. Yeah. It, you know, it's like his world is breaking into ours. I, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's doing. I I, I don't usually say why. I, I just try to assign points to someone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's the exit sign points to the exit. Yeah. So yeah. we've got a, a sign of unusual presence that shows up. I want to I want to look to the one it's pointing to, mm-hmm. and so that's what mm-hmm. we we did. We would just extend our times of worship. We didn't worship the sign. We we also didn't ignore the sign. It's, it's, no, it's, it's that's yeah, it's powerful. Didn't worship it, it. Didn't ignore it. Yeah, yeah, it's it was there for a reason. Why? It just it. It created an awe. In fact, I, I it happened twenty six times. I actually yeah. ended up counseling, yeah. c- counting over time. Mm-hmm. And and after about five or six times in, I I realized, man, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, he shows up in this way. I've heard of God showing up in ways in Chronicles where everybody's on their face, nobody can speak a word, do anything. Uh, we've had times where that awesome presence has been there and has, has been silence for mm-hmm. um, just about uh, 20 minutes, I remember, at one point, which is an eternity in a, in a corporate gathering. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have those kinds of things, but this was different. There was a lightness, a joy, but an awe. And then I remember, I, I don't know what to do. And I didn't feel like I needed to perform something. I just want, yeah. to, resp- I want to be a good steward. Yeah. And then I watched children. And children would run because it would it would often start in a corner, and children would run right into the middle of this cloud of his presence, and I thought I'm I'm just going to follow them, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to learn from the children because mm-hmm. it's it wasn't God wasn't showing up in an intimidating way where you fall on your face, biblical appropriate yeah, yeah absolutely yeah um, this was different it it was a welcoming presence, and children would run right into the middle of it. Uh, people would call their relatives, their friends who, who weren't at the meeting, and they would come in their pajama bottoms, you know, and come yeah, in, and, and the children would, you know, would run towards this cloud of his presence, and it was, uh, it was so remarkable. Mm-hmm. It was so remarkable. People's lives were so deeply impacted, but it's kind of those things. It's, it's one of those things. How do you talk about it? You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I did finally. I did one yeah. meeting where I, I kind of walked people through it. You know, as best I knew how, but uh, it was new for you too. Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> totally. Brand, well, yeah. and it hasn't happened uh, since, really. No. Uh, not nearly to the same level. No. Uh, uh, and uh, we're talking eight years ago, or yeah. you know, nine years ago yeah. now. So, yeah. and we didn't kind of. It wasn't something we prayed for to happen. It was just uh, somehow mm. we were hungry. We were always living hungry and responsive. Yeah. And then when it quit happening, we didn't panic about that either because we weren't. Uh, it, it was always about the Lord, yeah. not, not about the manifestations. Yeah, it doesn't mean he left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No. It doesn't mean his displeasure uh, on the group or yeah that somehow we quenched the Lord or anything. It's like no, no, no. Uh, not at all. I, uh, I I remember one one of our guys innocently put a, a thing out. You know, come see if the glory cloud will come tonight or something. And I found out about it. I said, oh, Take yeah, yeah. that down. Yeah, on our Bethel on TV. Yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. we can't we can't seek. Uh, recognition or in any way profit yeah. by attendance or whatever yeah. happens in church. We cannot use what God does for that. And uh, so I, I had him take it down. Yeah, <laughs> it scared yeah. me. It actually well, scared me. And the other, yeah. And, um, I'm glad you did. The other thing, we, we had guys check, uh, open up the air conditioners just to make sure nobody had tampered with them. There was no uh, piece of insulation or something breaking down, sure. uh, you know. So we, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, trust and verify, right? That's a little Ronald Reagan quote, <laughs> but the uh, uh, it's like trust, and then go. Well, let's make sure that we're not, you know, breathing in toxic uh, insulation <laughs> from the air conditioner malfunctioning and calling it the Lord's glory. So, so we did go up there and look and didn't find anything that was breaking apart or that had been degraded. And then, but it's also it wasn't perpetual. It would happen in the meetings. We, it was the, it was the time when the air conditioner was running all day long. And so yeah. we're not seeing it all day long. And then at, at, at these meetings or at particular times, we would yeah. we would kind of see the Lord's presence in that way. Um, you know, I I was taken aback. Like I had the same thing, a sense of awe, but I was totally taken aback by how uh, this might be a description of the hardest in my heart sometime. But the, how easily it would be to turn my attention away from it. Like, oh, huh? All right. Because somehow I thought when the Lord would show up so dramatically, everybody would know it. 
Uh, you know, everybody would be yeah. on their face before the Lord, and not everybody's on their face. We're there. We are. There's confusion, almost like Acts two. Yeah, exactly. There's wonder. There's bewilderment. Yeah, yeah. People have their cell phones out. I remember like going, oh, "You can't have your cell phone out filming." That's like, I'm like, well, I guess you can. And people are filming everything now. But like, I remember like, <laughs> you would just imagine that we would all be on our face, but it wasn't what the Lord did. I remember John and Carol are not were there one night, and we were just sitting oh, there, goodness. mystified and perplexed, but also. I was perplexed that it wasn't as a mandatory. Like awe wasn't as mandatory yeah, yeah. as I thought it would be. It's almost like you could go to the Grand Canyon and go like, yeah, big hole in the ground. You know, like sort of thinking maybe that's just me, but the that I would thought the Lord's presence shows up, it's mandatory. But like, no, I could have gone like, this is fine. I, I could have not let it impress me, you know, let it let yeah. it move me if I so that was the part that was I was was striking for me and my like, who God is and how we experience the Lord. Yeah, it was overwhelming and subtle at the same time. Oh, yeah, well said. It was yeah. overwhelming. If you lean into it, you're just overwhelmed that he would do this. You know, one night it was real strong in one corner and miracles just began to happen mm-hmm. uh, of healing uh, in in that in that one corner. Mm-hmm. And it, you can just tell it's, it's just these waves of presence. And But the night with John and Carol, I mean, it, it was a cloud. Yes, that burst, and then, I mean, it's just the hardest thing to understand. It's, okay, this is uh, maybe too transparent for the, uh, you know, for the internet, but the, <laughs> at that point, I was, on that night, because I was there that night, it was so undeniable and demonstrative. It's like, this is either the Lord or like an evil magician. Is I mean, a trickster is in the room, an illusionist is in right, the room. Right, you know, right. like somehow shooting compressed air out of a secret... <laughs> Yeah, spot right, because it was yeah. so, like it was, it was shocking. And so I was actually looking at the crowd, like, are there any tricksters or you know, like as I was trying to yeah, discern them. But yeah. I'm like trying to look and go, is, is there anybody manipulating this environment? And uh, there was none that I could see. I, it, I, the Lord was on. Don't get me wrong, I didn't have a scary uh, feeling about it, but it was so shocking. You're like, it, it, it hurts. It, was, it hurt the brain. Yeah. So it was like, and it's like a, when a when a guy makes a coin disappear. You're like, what? How'd that happen? Or yeah, yeah. you know, gives you the card with your signature on it. You're like, that can't happen. And I was having a bit of that dissonance as well. Like, wow. unless there's, like, this has got to be the Lord or a master illusionist. And I'm like, no, of course I think it's the Lord. And we, we double-checked yeah. and checked again. And 26 times when you look at it. But it was, it was it, it, I'm surprised it was that shocking. How much, I was doing that much brain work in that moment. You know, I was doing that much yeah. wondering and thinking. Interesting. And how much of an impact it had, not just in the, the awe of the Lord, but like, well, your ways are so mysterious. Like, why you come... During a meeting with the cloud that we all, you know, Scripture has describes a glory cloud, so that's like the phrase that we began to use because we didn't have a different one. Right, right. And it seemed more majestic than glitter cloud or whatever. <laughs> <But> the, <laughs> and the Lord came in a glitter cloud. Like mm, that's not great, but the, <laughs> yeah. But it, but it's it was shocking again. Like the the if you're if you're out there thinking like no, when God does a miracle, it's gonna like no, you can actually walk away from it not be interested, say it was the demonic, like we yeah. see it in Scripture. Yeah. And so, again, it's this sign that can be denied, that if you're hungry, you'll find the Lord, and if you're not, you'll just find more offense. It's true. Israel was fed with miracle food every day for 40 years, manna. Yeah. And they just got bored. Got mad about it. Got bored, yeah. <laughs> they saw the presence of God in a fire and a cloud over them as a, as a people, and it lost its impact. Yeah. And uh, so uh, signs become, boring is a wrong word, but I'll use it. Every day, they come commonplace, they commonplace. no longer move us. Yeah. Signs become common when you don't follow what the sign is pointing to. Yeah. And in this case, it's the person. He never becomes old. Yeah. He never becomes, it, there's never the absence of awe when you behold him, when you consider him. Um, so that's really what we worked hard to do during that season was just, Turn a heart to the Lord. Enjoy the unusual thing that he was doing. Yeah. Don't try to figure it out. Just enjoy it. And uh, there were times where that cloud would fill from the front of the sanctuary all the way to the back, every corner. It was like equal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you don't see it fall. You only see it go up. It was, mm-hmm. it was the, we have it on film. It just, yeah. it yeah. just, where did it go? I don't know, but it, yeah. it just would go up. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't wrap my head, but I, I did just stand there in awe. I remember standing talking to a friend and while, while talking to them, just seeing these 
pieces. From yes, and, the, by. The, and the, the child likeness of that. And we're aware of other environments where oil's been manifested or, or gold, uh, you know, in yeah. various places, yeah, and, yeah. you know, manna. So it, it seems to be something that the Lord does yeah. uh, as a sign and a wonder. It, it does it does make you wonder. <laughs> Yeah. And it is a sign. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's, so, I, I think we should be concerned if nothing happens. Mm-hmm. I don't mean mm-hmm. in every meeting, but yeah. I mean, if we live a life where we understand all that's going on, I may have reduced him to my size. Yeah. And that's not good. I I have to serve someone who who is awe-inspiring constantly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So are we open to the Lord doing that again or some more or oh, something course. different? or? Well, yeah. I, yeah. It didn't come by request. It didn't leave I, by request. <laughs> I didn't leave by request. I I am hungry for him to do what he pleases. Yeah. But having said that, I want to anticipate more. Mm. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to leave it up to him because there's churches all over the world that are saying, I, I just want whatever God wants. Nothing happens. Yeah. yeah. So you have to lean in at some point with a promise, a testimony. You have to take a risk. Will he heal this person? Uh, is it possible for us to prophesy and get a, a word of wisdom for this individual? You have to press in sometimes, pursue mm. earnestly spiritual gifts. Sometimes there's that requirement yeah. to pursue. So that's that's a part but of the it. the hungers manifest in a pursuit, in a yeah. risk-taking. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's an essential part. So I'm not going to measure our spirituality by... Whether mm-hmm. that glory cloud shows up again, that, that wouldn't be fair for him or for us because yeah. he may be doing something different. I just want more. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not looking to be wowed, but I am looking to be changed. Beautiful. And uh, yeah. that's that's it. Yeah, and, and we don't. Uh, I don't miss the glory cloud because I, I we have him, like his, uh, his abiding presence <laughs> with exactly. us in the exactly. community in our own individual lives. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I have him. I'm not missing that. That's actually how I recognized that it was from him mm-hmm. is because the, that presence that I encounter in my times with him alone, that's what filled the room. Wow. And so it, it wasn't, it was offensive in the sense that I don't understand yeah. it, but it wasn't yeah. offensive in the sense that I thought, well, what's going on? It, it wasn't that at all. It was like, this is the same. It's like uh, the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize how Jesus showed up. Mm-hmm. And there are sometimes he shows up different. Yeah. But it, but when you, you close your eyes, you get that sense of the presence of the Spirit of God. You go, okay, this is him. Yeah. And and, and that's that's the that's the test for me, is what what of him do I experience in my journey and my walk with him? Mm-hmm. That is what has to train me for when I encounter new things. <laughs> 